I would like to make a greeting card, but this configuration would also be great for a journaling card. You could create a little booklet that would fit inside here, or just a, a normal greeting card like I'm using it for. And if you watch my channel, you'll know why I'm in need of one to send to Eva, who returned my baby book to me from an Indiana rummage sale. Welcome to my channel. My name is Peg. I call my channel to all cosmics media. I enjoy making journals. You'll see encaustic wax on my channel. I'm doing a little more with that. You'll also see lots of other things. There's, there's just a lot going on. I like to dibble and dabble in a little bit of everything. So thanks for joining me. I hope you'll take a moment, like my vi videos. If you like the content, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let's get started on this card. I first want to start with some white cardstock, and I am just cutting it to size. Once again, I'm not going to go into measurements because I think that each and every person probably will make their card a different size, but I am just kind of measuring this card um, to be a normal, pl not playing card, but a normal greeting card size. I also want a little area on the front of the card that is going to um, be a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch less in dimension. So I believe the front of my card measures about four inches by six inches. So I'm cutting this black piece to three inches it's slightly under four, slightly under six, if that makes sense. So it, as you can see, it, it fits with the white outline. Doing the same thing with a second piece of white cardstock. So now I have this layered effect on the front. I have the black to frame the white and I am going to do that just sandwich. So I'm going white, black, white, black. On the top white piece, I'm using some peeled paint oxide ink. And I have a stencil of just a script. I am putting that over the top of the white piece to create my background. And now with that background complete, I will just ink around the edges with the same color, the peeled paint. And that is going to be the structure or the basic structure of the card. So I have the folded piece of white cardstock, the black that is slightly less than the dimension of the folded card, and then the second piece of white card stuck with the peeled paint ink, slightly less than the black piece. And it looks like I missed a little spot right there, so I'm going to reline that up and just add that in. Quick and easy. There you go. So that is done. And now for the fun part, I am going to take some shrinky dink substrate and ink up a stamp. And I'm using this leaf. So I want to get some good archival black ink on it. And I'm stamping that right on that shrinky dink paper and that paper is pretty clear so it's hard to see there but you can see where I've cut it to a size I have it um, connected down with my magnets there. I'll just go over that once again to make sure we get that good and solid. And now I'm going to cut that shrinky dink paper and pull out my heat gun. I saw Ashley do this over on Paper and Twine. She makes some beautiful cards 
and she had pulled out the shrinky dink and I had never thought to use that but this substrate makes a great focal point and you just take the heat gun to that shrinky dink paper it's even almost ridiculous to say but you take your heat gun to that paper and watch how it shrinks and it looks like it's going to fold onto itself but as you continue to apply the heat it straightens itself back out and I know a lot of people when using this for making jewelry I've seen this stuff used for jewelry a lot they like it to be straight and I think they go through a straightening process I I don't know I've never used it before but I know that I've seen it very, very straight, so they probably are um, using something as they heat it to keep it straight. I like the wavy edges of it because it just adds so much texture, so much interest to a focal point. So now this little shrinky dink has become the focal point for my card. And I will link Ashley's video where she uses this in my description. Because I did pick this idea up from her and I went to give her credit for it. I think it's, I think it's a great one. And I have, in the process of making this card, I pulled out my stamps and, and I stamped up a lot of different images and made them and have put them in my container for focal points so I'll be using them more and more in the things that I do because I just thought it was a great idea so I'm going to set that on I went ahead and cut another piece of white cardstock to showcase my shrinky dink on this card So there are the layers for the front of that card. And I think this adds so much. I'm pretty happy with this. So let me know in the comments what you think. If you think this is a good idea, if you think I'm nuts to be pulling out the shrinky dinks. I can't wait to. I'm headed to Florida. My husband's staying home, but I'm headed to Florida to spend a little bit of time with my five-year-old and three-year-old granddaughters. And I can't wait to to get this out and play with it with them. I think they'll love it. So here we go. Let's glue that down. And I am going to just put a little bit of glitter glue on the back of it. And the reason I'm choosing the glitter glue is because it dries clear. So hopefully you will not be able to see it. And I did just glue it behind the stamp just in case. But... I could not see it on my card. So now I have my card structured in that. I I think that's great. I can just stick this down in an envelope and, and send it off. But I don't have any envelopes. So I am going to make my own. Prior to doing that, I want to just stamp one word on the inside. I am making this card to send to the woman that found my baby book in a rummage sale in Indiana and sent it back to me. So I'm very grateful for that. So I am utilizing the word grateful. And then I will write her a little note and send this off in the post. I also, since she is just starting junk journaling, I'm also going to send her some happy mail. So I'm I'm filling, filling a container or a envelope, one of the shipping envelopes that that I have received from Amazon. I'm repurposing and sending that off to her in the post here. Well, it's already gone, and and I'm just getting this up. But now I want to create what I am going to utilize as my envelope. So I'm cutting a piece of black cardstock slightly wider than my card. And I'm going to have to cut two pieces because this will not fold up and fold down and meet. 
So I'm going to have to piece it together. So I'm pulling out some additional black cardstock and just cutting a second piece the same width. And now I'll just glue those together. And that will fold over nicely. And once again, I'm just using the glitter glue. I just kind of pick up whatever is whatever is handy. It dries fast, dries clear. I use it for just about everything. So now that card, I will glue the back of that card to the inside of this, and it will make a nice little insert for a journal as well. So I'm utilizing it as a greeting card, but think about this. If you had put a little signature inside that card, you could have folded some sheets of paper together and made a little signature and just stapled it into the inside of that card. This would make a great little pocket stuffer inside your journal. You could create this, this little piece and it would, would work well inside a journal. So now I want to score, and I'm going to score about where I want that to fold up from the bottom, and I'm scoring two marks one quarter inch apart, which gives me just a little bit of a container, if you will. So it it folds up and, and gives me a little bit of lip. I'm marking where I want that at the top and doing the same thing. So I'm scoring and then scoring once again a quarter inch of an inch away from my first score. And now I have that folded so it contains my card. I'm just reinforcing those score lines. See how the card fits right in there, and now I just need to trim this top down. So we'll take a few inches off of that, and there, there we go. I think I need to take a little bit more off of that. because I want to put that figure, a little figure eight closure on the front. So now my card fits right there in the center. My fold goes down over the top nicely, but I can see the line where I glued the two pieces of black cardstock together. So I have this white with the peeled paint script print on the um, card, and I think I'm going to use something with that to cover that. But first, let me chomp off those corners, and I use the half inch side of the crocodile. And I want to mark where I'm going to punch my holes. I'm going to make sure those are right in the center. And then I punch one right there. And line that up and make sure that I am directly in line with the first punch. And I'm pulling out my crocodile, and I have this set on the smallest punch setting. I think it's a quarter of an inch hole. And I'll just go ahead and stick my card inside there and punch those holes. I want to ink up some additional paper for the inside of the card. 
pulling that peeled paint out once again. And inking that script over the top. And I will use that for two things. One, to cut a little strip to cover where those black pieces of paper was together. And then I'm going to come back and do the same thing and cover the inside of the card. But we'll get to that here in a minute. Let's go ahead and measure that front. And let's cut that narrow, but not so narrow that it doesn't contain a few lines of script. And we'll glue that down to cover that line. And we're also, in the, in the meantime, covering our hole. So we will have to punch through that hole from the back to open that hole up. But we'll let that glue dry first. I'm just grabbing a baby wipe to wipe off any little residue that may have leaked out. And there, we're getting, we're getting close to the end. So let's punch through that hole. Grab a couple of small brads and my one inch circle punch. And I'm punching circles in black and circles out of that um, script. Going to glue those together so we have two pieces of cardstock glued together, and this will create our closure. Let me grab my craft pick and line that up to the center of this little cardstock medallion and punch a hole. <clears throat> Insert my brad. And then we will slip that on to the card. And there we go. Let's turn around and do the same thing. So we have two, one over each hole. Just poke that hole through the center, slip that brad through, and put that second one into place. I thought I got out two brads the first time, but apparently not. And now that is in place, but you also have those brads, the back of them, the, the little, um, you know, pieces that you fold over are showing. So I want to just measure up and cut some cardstock and ink it up with the script white, white cardstock with the peeled paint script, and we'll just cut that to size and put that over the inside of this booklet. Just like that. So let's just ink it up, and we 
are just about to the end. I left everything in. You can fast forward if you choose. And that will fit in there nicely. And I'll do that um, three times or twice, once for the top flap and once for the bottom flap. That will cover up where that brad sticks through and will serve to secure that brad into place. So I'm just gluing that down with some glitter glue. We'll do the same at the top and glue this card down into place. So that works nicely. Just going to ink around that edge with a little bit of that peeled paint. I think that looks nice on the black. Now we'll measure here, finish up. And now that we have everything in place. I've pulled out just some kitchen string and I'm just going to tie that string in a figure eight around those two little cardstock medallions that we stuck on the front and that will finalize and complete this card. So there you go. And like I said before, I think this would make it great if you, instead of making this just a card, if you included some journaling paper inside that card, you have a great little journal that you could stick inside a larger journal. And you have a super journaling spot. It also makes a great greeting card. Doesn't that shrinky dink look great there on the front? I'm infatuated with the shrinky dink now. So I'm sure you'll see more of that. So thank you very much for stopping by. I always appreciate you watching the videos on my channel. The thumbs up does help me exponentially. So if you would give me that thumbs up if you like my content. And if you want to give me a thumbs down, just go to another channel. And uh, you know, go somewhere where you can give the thumbs up. And if you would subscribe, I would appreciate that greatly. So Thanks for being here. I always enjoy seeing your comments, and I shall say bye for now.